In May of 2020, Freight Waves Live is headed back to the largest freight market in the Southeast, Atlanta, Georgia. Join Freight Waves for our best event yet, featuring captivating keynote speakers and rapid fire demos of technology that is sure to take our industry to the next level. This is your opportunity to interact with some of the most innovative leaders as we mark a new decade in transportation. See you in Atlanta May 5th and 6th. It's Monday and that means another week of Freight Waves Now. I'm your host Anthony Smith and coming up we have Luke Flaska talking to the brokers. We also have Andrew Cox making an appearance with a shipper update, but first a word from the Sultan himself, Zach Shukin, with the carrier update brought to you by Powerfleet. Stay tuned. Hey everyone and welcome to your Monday and this carrier update presented by Power Fleet. So over the weekend, not a lot's changed. Tender rejection rates for both reefer and dry van, not moving a lot. You wouldn't expect that though over the weekend with about two days of relative inactivity. But again, we're not expecting a big amount of activity here as we enter the third or the final week of January, I should say. Uh, tender rejection rates for reefer carriers, about 15.14%. Now it is starting to settle down for the reefer carriers who, again, have a lot more volatility uh, in terms of their overall, you know, what we see in tender rejection rates, spot rate action, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. That's due to a lot of uh, volatile market spikes because they have a lot more one directional freight. All the produce that comes out of California, for instance, in April does tend to go throughout the country and then does not have a lot of commodities coming back into that market. So a lot more volatility in the reefer segment, which did have a nice little January boost here as a lot of that protection from freeze freight started to move out of the country. Now, vans been on a steady decline throughout January, had a little bit of a moment there in the middle of the month, but not so much, uh, you know, keeping things really just more status quo versus this free fall that you have when you come out of the, out of the holiday period. So let's look at the demand side of things. As reefer compares to van freight, this is a relative chart of volumes for reefer and for dry van. Now, if you see right here on the blue mountain side here, that's gonna be your reefer volumes. We're up 15% year over year in overall reefer volumes. Now, again, it's about 10 to 15% of the overall contracted freight market in general. So it doesn't take as much to move that needle on terms of percentage, but it is interesting to note that dry van volumes down 1% as reefer really having a pretty nice little uh, season here in this winter months, if you will. Not, not typically the time of year that you would expect reefer to be thriving, but uh, they are doing a lot better than they were last year. That has not translated entirely in terms of reefer uh, spot rates being higher than they were in 2019 or early part of 2019, at least at this point. But it is an interesting and also an encouraging sign because a lot of the reefer freight that moves this time of year is more on that industrial side, which is that stuff, the chemicals, the paints, adhesives, things like that, the pre-production items, that do tend to lead the freight market in terms of overall production, that industrial production. If you listen to Anthony Smith, he'll tell you that a lot of the freight that comes out of the industrial manufacturing side does drive a lot of dry van volume here later in the year. So it is a little bit encouraging uh, sign for dry van, even though it's their reefer counterparts that are having a pretty good moment here in January, also December and November overall. So as we continue to watch this trend, we will be paying attention to that as we move into the spring. And again, produce season is just around the corner. So if, these, if this demand remains elevated, it could have an exaggerated impact to all those produce movements coming out of California, out of all those markets in Florida and whatnot, as these reefer carriers continue to have uh, extended periods of utilization through a drier period. So where are we at in the overall market itself? This is the weighted rejection index map. It's pretty flat. Don't let these blues, uh, you know, fool you. The highest value for the blue on the weighted rejection index is 2.74 down there, while the lowest value is negative 10.28. So what that means is we are a lot more down than we are up, especially at this moment in time. We've got the Rock Island market leading the way. That's your 2.14. And we've got the Salt Lake City uh, market, which is down here at the bottom. They've had the quickest decline week over week overall. 
So anybody that was getting uh, you know, a lot higher rate out of the Salt Lake market or they were continuing to see increased utilization out of the Salt Lake market, that condition is changing as we enter in the last week of January. So don't expect too much out of that. Portland still having a pretty good showing, but again, don't get too excited. That dark blue means that it's just right above 2.59 on the weighted rejection index, which is not that significant. So don't get too excited there. It's a relative index. So we've entered the, in terms of, you know, this is the Chinese New Year. What does that mean for you as a carrier? Well, it means that overall, you should expect volumes to be relatively stable for about four weeks and then bottom out right here. This is last year's import volume coming into the Los Angeles market. Bottoms in March, you see this big drop right here? That's your volumes out of the Los Angeles market. So wait for it for about four weeks and in the LA market should be softening quite a bit. And that'll do it for today's carrier update. The comprehensive logistics offerings from Powerfleet cover in-cab ELD, fleet management, trailer tracking, cargo monitoring, and tracking other assets such as chassis and intermodal containers. Power up your operations with Powerfleet. Hi everyone, I'm Luke and I'm bringing you another broker update for today. And we're, we're gonna be looking at a few different things today. For the most part, the market is fairly flat. There's not a lot going on uh, in, in terms of volatility. However, that being said, there's a lot going on in terms of reefer activity. So let's take a look at the chart behind us. So right here in blue, we have the outbound tender rejection in for reefers only in the United States. So you see there, we're sitting right around 15% right now. We came off of this big little drop right here just a couple of days ago. And we saw that massive spike right around the holiday, uh, almost 25%. So that's a pretty big spike. We've come down to about 15, so a little over half. Now, where you really want to uh, have your eyes focus in is this green line. So that's the volume levels for reefer freight in the United States. So we're sitting right about, you can see this index level here, about 1,400. All that really means is just telling us where you know it, it is going up and when it's going down. So if you can see down here, this is this time last year, we were sitting just above 1,200 on the index scale, meaning volume levels have increased nearly 15% since this time last year. And we're at almost the highest that they've been for the most part, apart from a little holiday spike there. That's a really, really good sign. If you're a reefer broker, there's a lot of opportunities out there to move freight. And with rejections going down, we're gonna show you exactly where you can really increase your margins. As you may know, drive-in rejections tend to move are not nearly as volatile as reefer rejections. So being able to make a split second decision when the market changes with reefer rejections is very, very powerful. So we're gonna take a look, before we dive into a market, we're gonna take a look at the weighted rejection index or our money map as I like to call it. So right here, not a lot happening in the market today. It's fairly flat. Um, if you can see these blue areas here, those are typically areas of growth um, or areas where uh, shippers are having a little bit harder time Time getting their freight covered. Now, if you can see on the scale all the way down at the bottom, we're really only sitting at about almost three on the weighted rejection index. So these really dark blue areas here in the middle of the country, around Iowa, Portland, some here over here on the West Coast, it's nothing to get really excited about. Not until you get into the high single digits or the double digits is there really anything to get excited about. For the most part, it's a contracting market. You see down here in the red, we've got Salt Lake City there at about minus 10.28. So really, really for the most part, the market is contracting. That being said, if you're looking to focus any sales calls for today, I'd focus somewhere here on the West Coast, you might have a little luck in the middle of Texas or potentially right here in the middle of the country around Iowa, but uh, for the most part, not a lot happening today. Um, it's a pretty soft market. Shippers aren't having that much difficulty covering freight. However, we're going to focus on the Salt Lake City market today, and again, we're going back to reefer demand here. So this is the rejection, the tender rejection for reefer loads out of Salt Lake City. So we saw before our average in the United States as of today was about just over 15%. We hit this spike here just about a week ago um, at just oh, under about 45%. Okay, that's a massive spike. And we've fallen down to 25. So while we are still uh, well above the national average at 25, we've fallen off a cliff here really since only about three days ago. So since the weekend. So if you were moving freight last weekend for shippers out of Salt Lake City, any reefer freight, 
Uh, you should be lowering your pay to carriers significantly today from last week. All right, you should not be paying anywhere close to where you're paying. You're going to see a massive increase in the margins that you're making if you can really push carrier rates down. All right, and you may even be able to lower your bids a little bit to shippers to win more freight. I'm Luke, that'll do it for your broker update for today and have a fantastic Monday. Voices from every corner of the supply chain concerning all modes of transportation. From the world's largest logistics podcast network, this is what the freight tech revolution sounds like. Freightcast presented by FreightWaves. Subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to your Shipper Update. I'm here with Andrew Cox. Andrew, what do you have for us today? Tony, today we're talking a little bit about the impacts to global shipping uh, that the coronavirus is having currently. Um, we're looking at you know, somewhere around 3,000 cases right now. There's been 80 deaths in China. <clears throat> a fifth case was just confirmed in the U.S. Uh, you know, typically these unpredicted uh, events, a lot of them being geopolitical, can right. be a positive uh, for global shipping rates. Okay. Um, like, for example, back uh, last year when the Saudi um, when the Saudi facilities were, were attacked by air, uh, it pushed um, global shipping rates up to near global shipper um, tanker rates up to nearly two hundred thousand dollars per day. So right. sometimes it can have a, a positive effect, creating inefficiencies in global shipping. Um, but this time it's kind of expected that the opposite is going to happen. The the positives that can come from inefficiencies are going to be outweighed by the negatives that come with a decrease uh, in oil demand. Right. Uh, so the only real uh, the best comparisons that we have for this is looking back about 15, 20 years to the SARS outbreak in 2003. Um, but the difficulty in comparing this to that is that China has exploded in oil demand since then, more than doubled. Uh, and at that point in 2003, the SARS virus actually brought down global um, oil prices down 20%. So it's kind of difficult to gauge how bad this impact is going to be, but we do know it will likely be short-lived uh, okay. just for the next couple weeks. Got you. And so one of the things that's really impacting it is going to be production, right? So. What are some of the areas that's really going to be hit the hardest for China? Yeah, well, the big thing is that this city, the city of Wuhan, uh, the, where, the, where the virus started, uh, it's a city of over 11 million people. Geographically, it's 10 times the size of Dallas, so it's a massive industrial production hub also. It's the, one of the leading manufacturing um, for automobiles uh, in all of China. Um, the, there's kind of a, some goods and bads that come with the timing of this. The right. good thing is that a lot of the factories during this time are already shut down uh, due to the Lunar New Year. They, they shut down for two or three weeks to allow people to travel and spend time with their families. But the bad news about that is that while they're off work, they often spend a lot of, uh, spend a lot of money on retail and eating out. Right. Uh, and many of those cities are, are ch pretty much shut down at this time. There's a, a region of nearly 65 million people that are not allowed to travel by car, by public transport. Uh, so it's bringing down oil uh, demand in those cities. There's a driving ban in, in a lot of those cities. Um, but production is not going to be hurt that bad, but um, spending is going to be impacted. Uh, a lot. There are some, anima some economists and analysts are expecting um, a little bit over 1% hit to GDP this year, which could be huge. Okay, so definitely is what some would consider a black swan event. Um, as you mentioned, not going to impact production so much just because it's during that, that Chinese New Year holiday, mm -hmm. but that retail segment's definitely a huge driver for, for demand and definitely going to impact GDP. So when we're looking at that aspect of it, that's really going to impact, I think, what we can expect for China's overall growth in the upcoming year and definitely something that can really hamper rates coming out of it. Certainly, yeah. I mean, Wuhan uh, itself had GDP of almost 8% last year, which okay. is nearly 2% higher than uh, national GDP. So this is a major uh, hub. And if this, you know, if this outbreak lasts longer than we're expecting, which, you know, a lot of expectations are, are wide-ranging, um, it could be a, a, even a bigger impact to Chinese GDP. Um, but it's just ill times right now, in, in a time where nearly like a third of China um, travels during this time. Right. Uh, you're, you're having a lot of people having to stay at home, so you're not spending as much on tourism and retail and eating out. So uh, yeah, it's a major impact. And a significant amount of people, roughly 50 million, right, being quarantined, and that's really going to impact the spending. That's roughly around, I think, 15% of U.S. population. Yeah. Um, so okay. this is definitely a developing situation. Are we covering this other places? Yeah, we're covering it all over. Uh, Greg Miller had an article come out this morning talking about uh, that the, the global shipping is in the crosshairs of the coronavirus. Everybody go check that out. I right. also know Henry Byers is going to continue uh, monitoring the situation, our maritime expert. Uh, yeah, Freightways is going to be on top of this throughout the Excellent. next couple of weeks. Excellent. And any 
big takeaways for shippers here? Uh, yeah, the big ship <clears throat> takeaways for American shippers, uh, for shippers and NVOCCs and freight forwarders, is just be prepared. Uh, U.S. Customs is likely going to change its clearance. Um, you know, it, the things it takes to, to get things into the U.S. is going to change these things up. So either be prepared with backups in, in other Asian countries or other places around the world, uh, or just be expected for bigger delays and more expenses uh, getting things through Customs in the next couple weeks. Excellent. So it sounds like there's a lot of uncertainty, and that's really gonna to add to a lot of already global uncertainty. We just got past our phase one trade deal. We start the new year off with this, so if nothing, it's exciting so far. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> exciting. Uh, yeah, just be prepared, everybody. Things are coming. Excellent. Andrew, thank you so much for that insight, and thank you so much for tuning in for the ship update, and that's gonna do for this episode of Freight Waves Now. The content doesn't stop here. Our team is always posting around the clock, so check us out on all your favorite social media platforms. We're also uh, active on our Freight Race TV app, so check us out on all your favorite streaming platforms, including Apple TV. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode.